to be rewritten. It's the approach to the, yeah. the, the music or something. So. The other thing, too, is that when you were, you were talking about discerning between... And Tom, Tom was talking about pro process. I think one of the things that's the most important that people... is to, to start to learn your own process and respect your own process. You know, there's guys that write 250 songs a year. And, and then there's guys like me or Don, we might write 12 or 15 or whatever, depending on the thing. But respecting that process and also... You, when when we sit down and we put that stuff out there, we don't always know if it's good or, or bad. So sometimes we have to turn off that internal editor that immediately stops us. The, the, the thing is to just put it all out there and record it. I mean, we we um, we re, Don and I were up north a couple of years ago and staying at a cat uh, my the cabin I have up there up north of me meaning northern Minnesota and I was. We sat and we started jamming. We just suddenly we just kept our, our phones and we recorded everything we did. In the and the gibberish that came out of our mouth. And how many of those two or three of those songs ended up to be songs on our, our C D that we're working on? So you know, learn your own you know, don't compare your insides to somebody else's insides or somebody else's outsides, because you can you'll start to just you you'll sell yourself short real real quick. Um, as a craft, uh, I heard David Grissman, a back manual player, say, your style is dictated by a li your limiting factor. Now, uh, the songs that I write come out kind of wordy because I'm not real confident holding long notes, so I, I'm working on my vocal for my writing purposes. I guess you guys imagine this, this thing that you want to create. What are the limiting factors, like chord theory? What could we be working on that would allow us to create What's in our vision? I don't think there uh, are. I don't. I don't agree with that. You don't. Think I don't so? think there's a limiting factor. No, I don't. I. I think that that's bullshit. <laughs> okay. Quite seriously, because, for instance, we got ukuleles because we could write in the car. Neither one of us knew how to play ukuleles. Right. <laughs> you know what? We learned. I mean, the the perfect example of that is Paul McCartney. He plays a guitar. He plays. He just. Right picked up a guitar, and pick up different instruments, and don't worry about whether you know how to do it. Just fucking do it. That's right. <laughs> and make mistakes. I don't think there's a... And if you're worried about holding long notes, take another song. Are you a lyricist or a uh, I do both. Yeah. Well, but if, you get, if you're worried about that, take a song that you love already and write a different lyric, one that has long notes. Okay. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. And then, those then put notes. a different melody to it, and don't tell anybody. I used to hate Joni Mitchell for putting so many lyrics in a song, and I'm going, well, how does she think of all these things? <laughs> you hated her in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. On that note, my, uh, so in my song, Never. <laughs> so, are you saying that that your song is really feels incomplete? It's too short. Uh, it feels complete, but it's too short. You know, like like the, the lyrics feel complete. Like, oh, well, that's not all I have to say about that. But you want to be able to say more to make it a complete song. Well, there's nothing wrong with writing short songs. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote. I was a co-writer on, on on the song. Mm -hmm. Learning to play my Christmas guitar, everyone's looking at me. It came in a box with a bright silver star under the Christmas tree. Nobody knows that my fingers are bleeding, I'm smiling so no one can see. <laughs> Learning to play my Christmas guitar, what a wonderful Christmas for me. I wrote, I wrote that with 
Fred Kohler and David Mallet. You wouldn't think three people were necessary. <laughs> each, each of us wrote a line, and then the last line kind of wrote itself. Um, and that song's complete. I mean, I sometimes do it in my show when, and mash the guitar up and, and ham it up. But, but you know, could you play a little bit of that, what you do, when you, when you play it live? Learning to play my Christmas guitar, guitar. Like that. Well, see, now that's an example. But, but seriously, that's an example of, of, of another part of it being written. Not just the, the actual song he wrote, but there, there's another element that needed to be written in that song. And that's it, you know. How many of you have rhyming dictionaries? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm always encountering people who think that rhyming dictionaries are cheating. I think they're fantastic. Half of the time, when I'm looking for a rhyme, I'll find a different thought. I'll find a rhyme that leads me in a place I never would have gone, but that I'm glad to go. I think rhyming dictionaries are wonderful. Um, some some rhyming dictionaries are are programmed into these um, apps, um, some of which I use. Um, there's there's a writer's program called uh, Master Writer that has the best rhyming dictionary. And thesaurus. And yeah, and it has has uh, um, phrases and and uh, popular rhymes and. Um, current culture rhymes, and uh, very, very interesting use. So it's it's easier to find rhymes than it used to be. I mean, the old rhyming dictionaries worked, but they were much slower than than, than the ones we have available now. But I I believe in rhyming dictionaries. Do you, do you use one, too? All the time. Yeah. 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 We use the Google, too. Yeah, yeah. The what? The Google. <laughs> the Google. Search. The Google, is that... Yeah. What is that? The Google search? Google? Oh. <laughs> Google. Yeah, the Google. What is Google? <laughs> Don and I wrote a song that we did last night called The Garden of the Dead. And and we were sitting there and said, you know, we should let's put a bunch of names from the from the tombstones, but let's not put new names, let's put old names. So we went and Googled old names. <laughs> A little, and how does it go? Uh, Jedediah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Zachariah, Zachariah, Lorelai, Philomena, in between Evangeline and Mordecai. In between In between And the thing is, I think, I don't know what year you, you, you actually Google a particular year or like yeah, part of the 18, century 18, 18, to, yeah, to, to, yeah. Get, to get the kind of names that really gave it some color. Yeah. I, wrote, I wrote a, a, a song that had in a verse that starts... George Washington and Martha sat before a glowing hearth on the other soft Virginia. And, and Christine Levin came up to me and said, Hartha? Martha? Hartha? I love that kind of rhyming. Yeah, Tom, 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 so we'll play a little bit of a boat on water. There you go. Oh, yeah. Let's get this boat in the water with the horse where they are. We'll roll down. And then uh, I defy anyone. <laughs> Come at me if you like, but order rhymes with the water. One of my all time favorite rhymes is the Loretta Lynn of the word T I R E D and H A R D. Tard, tard. I love that, and, and so anytime you can take advantage of of uh, that kind of dialect thing and rhyme it, I mean, any way, any way you can find a rhyme. I I've rhymed the word barrel and arrow together several times. I, I, which, which, which raises my rant, by the way. Um, half of the songs that I hear out of Nashville nowadays don't bother with rhyme anymore, anyway. and I am so bitterly opposed to that philosophy. Rhyme is really important in song. Yeah. Our mind craves to yeah. hear it. And when we don't hear it, we 
We don't remember. And isn't that what this kind of makes it difficult and sets, you know, the better songs apart? I mean, yeah. anybody could write a song that doesn't fucking rhyme. <laughs> 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 well, yes, Rekabori, everyone called um, Atheist Ain't Got No Songs. Oh, that's great. You ever heard that one? Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. yeah. That, that was really good. I don't ain't, know. Atheist Ain't Got No Songs? Yeah, it goes, uh, I like love that. that. <laughs> 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 it's just, uh, it's just, uh, how can the gill for the Jews back to sing that he is risen? Atheists just sing the blues. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the American songbook writers, Cole Porter and those guys, I mean, listen to the rhymes in there. They had a, they, they had a tighter set of rules. Yeah. Yeah, you know they had to rhyme perfectly. For perfect more. rhyme. Perfect rhyme. There is such a thing as perfect. You know what perfect rhyme is? Yeah. It's a real tired yeah. and hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was out walking one day and I was listening to a, a soundtrack, a, a cast recording of a revival of uh, Anything Goes it was on Broadway, and which all of that is Cole Porter, of course. And he was singing the song, um, You'd be so easy to love. And it gets to, You'd be so nice to awaken with, so nice to sit down to eggs and bacon with. And I, I stopped and stopped. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's left. Uh, it's always not the man, some thing that was Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, I that, think sometimes we start with some baggage about songwriting. I, I personally come from obviously a European descent where writing a song, if it's as short as a girl, well, if you want to write a two minute song, write a two minute song. There are no yeah. rules. Which is song, yeah. It's all the music marketing industry that says a song must be 330. Well, and absolutely. I'm interested in all manner of innovation. I like Hans Zimmer. I'm going to a Hans Zimmer masterclass yeah, because he writes awesome music. And if, I'm, he's a, if a symphony has to be four days long, if it has to be four days long, that's okay. Yes. I don't see any rules in the form of music. Yeah. Look at the look at the music comes from that. Look at the look at the lines on the Beatles. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How many of them are under two minutes long? Yeah. They sound. They're they done. Sound <laughs> and yesterday was a scrambled egg. Right? And you know what that's? No, that, that's about? that's really a myth. That oh, it is? scrambled eggs is 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 a. <laughs> what is called a dummy lyric. Yeah. You have a tune, and you want to remember that tune. You want to write a lyric for that tune, but you don't have a lyric. Right? So you, you write nonsense words that fit that yeah. tune. So when you write the lyric, the phrase scrambled eggs is three syllables, and you need a three-syllable, and it turns out to be yesterday. Yeah, he wasn't actually writing a song. You no, know what he, that song's about? Mm -hmm. It's about something. I, I read it up. Is it yeah. It's about his mother passing away. That's right. yeah. mm. a uh, child, what, a, what a genius song. It's, it's her, not on the nose. It yeah. sounds like a love song. Why she? Was it something I did? He was a young kid. You think when they die, you know, yeah. it's fault. That's a brilliant song. Right. Oh. When that song came out, my dad lost a friend in a, the same car accident he was in when that song came out. Wow. And he said, this song is one of the three songs that will make him cry every time. He just couldn't believe it. The most recorded said, song by far of all time. He said to himself, yeah. why does this happen to me? Yeah. yeah. Also, I was looking in the rhyming dictionary that I have, and I came across city and pity and pity, and I thought, oh, I can make a work out of it. So I wrote, um, we cut down some trees for a city, then made the street for them in pity. This deforestation is causing frustration for me because our planet's not pretty. And I didn't think about that lyric until I saw those words. And I thought, wow, I got a lyric out of that. Just looking at the dictionary. I think of um, yesterday as a perfect song. For me, it's a perfect song. It's in the verse, verse, release, verse form, which is um, a, a pure pop form. Um, form is something we need to pay attention to, but if we're so, just starting out, I would suggest using the verse chorus form. Four, four line verse, four line chorus. 
and um, obviously a different a different melody.